What's up, Hoopers? Welcome to our channel, Truly Trending. And before we make a crossover to our top 10 list of why Michael Jordan sought revenge, don't forget to hit the like button, share and subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to slam the notification bell for the latest videos. And here are the 10 epic moments of MJ's revenge. Taking over in number 10, let me make this one. Hall of Fame point guard Gary Payton and Chicago Bulls legend Michael Jordan provided him with a welcome to the NBA moment while playing his rookie season with the Seattle Supersonics. He noted Jordan remembered the gloves comment while battling Bulls teammate B.J. Armstrong in an exhibition contest and then took over in the team's first regular season meeting. Jordan even told Armstrong, leave the rookie to me. After getting Payton in an early foul trouble that forced him to the bench for an extended stretch, he walked over late in the game and said, this is the real deal right here. Welcome to the NBA, little fella. Number 9. Young But Arrogant Kevin Garnett was a notorious trash talker throughout his two decades in the league, but he learned early on. On February 27, 1996, Jordan's Bulls and Garnett's Timberwolves were tightly engaged at the United Center. Through three quarters, Chicago led by just six points, but Garnett changed the entire flow of the game when he told his teammate Isaiah J.R. Ryder to keep quote-unquote killing Jordan in their individual matchup. Ryder even soothed the rookie KG down, but he kept going, and suddenly the expectation happened. The Bulls dominated the fourth quarter, outscoring the Timberwolves 38-23 on the way to an easy 120-99 victory. Jordan finished with a game-high 35 points, leaving both Garnett and Ryder exhausted. Number 8. Be careful what you ask for. Retired MJ accepted an ill-advised challenge sent by a young Bulls player. I guess he never heard what Kendall Gill had to say about challenging MJ. Quote, calling out the devil is one thing, facing him is another. End quote. That player who called out the devil was Corey Benjamin, who was taken from the 1998 draft. MJ took on Benjamin one-on-one, -on -one, and the legend absolutely burned the rookie. What caused this game in the first place between MJ and Benjamin was a challenge with a teammate. Apparently, Benjamin told a teammate of his, Randy Brown, that he could challenge MJ. Soon after, MJ showed up to a Bulls practice and dismantled Benjamin for good. Number 7. Don't ignore him. The Bulls entered the 1996 Finals, but before playing the Finals, one particular incident provided Jordan some extra motivation. Many coaches from the other teams were afraid of MJ's extreme competitiveness. So what did Coach George Carl do with Michael? Nothing. He simply avoided any incident that might put him and his team into trouble. And that was the biggest mistake. Before Game 1, MJ and his journalist friend, Ahmed Rashad, were out for dinner. The pair noticed Carl a few tables away from them. But when Carl was done with his meal, he got up and gave Jordan the cold shoulder by just walking away. And the rest was history. The Bulls defeated the Western Conference champion, Seattle Supersonics, four games to two. Number 6. Don't trash talk MJ. The year is 1994, with Jordan retired from the NBA and playing basketball. Suddenly, a rookie on the Utah Jazz by the name of Byron Russell wanted to get some face time with Jordan. Russell started talking to him, asking him why he had to retire so soon, proceeded to tell Jordan that he could have guarded him and shut him down on the court. Upon hearing that statement from Russell, Jordan made it to a point to embarrass him the next time he faced him. As Jordan said, Russell was on his list from that point on. As he predicted, Jordan would go on to bully Russell after that point. Number 5. MJ vs. MJ – Who's the Best? As we know during the startup of Michael Jordan's career, Magic Johnson was already at his prime. Jordan always lived in a shadow of Magic Johnson, even if Michael worked himself so hard to achieve the MVP title. He was always being defeated for the MVP by Magic Johnson. Magic landslide the MVP awards from 1986 to 87 season to 1989-90 season. Nonetheless, after those years, it was obvious that Jordan was ready to take over the league. Jordan took home back-to-back -back MVPs from the 1990-1991 and 1991-1992 seasons. He added two more scoring titles to make it six in a row. From this moment on, he was unstoppable. Number 4. A Game of His Life If you didn't know the name LeBradford Smith, you're probably not alone. LeBradford, a former star at Louisville Washington Bullets, was in his second season in the NBA and had the game of his life that night on March 19, 1993. LeBradford scored 37 points and perfect 7-for-7 seven seven from the free throw line. A little-known player had outplayed Jordan for the majority of the game that night, and making things worse, Smith even taunted MJ by saying, nice game, Mike, not knowing MJ had taken things personally. On the following night in Washington, Jordan was nearly reaching his goal by scoring 36 points in the first half of his way to 47 for the Bulls' blowout win. 
In case you're wondering, Smith scored 15 points in the loss. Number 3. A Plan to End the Bulls and MJ By the time 1998 Eastern Conference Finals rolled around, it was pretty evident that Michael Jordan was in his final season in the NBA, and Reggie Miller convinced himself that the Pacers were the better team. Miller disputed statements on numerous occasions. However, the most iconic he said, quote, In my mind, I was thinking, this is it. We're going to retire Michael Jordan, end quote. And Reggie even teased Jordan as Black Jesus. But unfortunately for Miller and that great Pacers roster, we all know what happened. We all know that Chicago came out on top. The Bulls clobbered the Pacers 106-87 during Game 5 Finals. Number 2. Harsh Statement Paid a Greater Price the Knicks head coach, Jeff Van Gundy, was more defensive-minded than anything, but there was a moment when his lips lost control and stated that Jordan befriended other players to gain a competitive advantage. In addition, JVG even called Jordan a con man in the NBA. Jordan was offended by his words and responded in the game against Knicks, with 51 points while cursing out Van Gundy the entire game. At the end of the game, Gundy had to answer if he regretted his criticism on Jordan, and he responded that he did not. However, the Knicks head coach paid dearly on what he said against MJ. Number 1. The Freeze Out Number 1 is all about Michael Jordan's beef with another player, Isaiah Thomas, of the Detroit Pistons. Back in 1985 All-Star Game, Thomas was allegedly conspired to downplay Jordan's role in the game by telling the other players, including Magic Johnson, not to pass the ball to Michael Jordan. After the controversy, the game is now widely referred to as the Freeze Out. After that, Michael always had something for Isaiah. In 1991, Chicago Bulls finally break through against the Pistons, and Chicago swept Detroit, including Isaiah Thomas. The Pistons walked off the court with 7 to 9 seconds left without congratulating the Bulls. It was even reported that MJ influenced the 1992 United States men's Olympic basketball team not to include Thomas. Which of these do you think are the most badass moments? Holler at us in the comments section down below. Bounce that like share and subscribe button and ring that notification bell for more interesting videos just like this one.